Welcome, Carl. Hey, Michael. Um, I'm hesitant to ask because we could take an hour to answer this, but how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm I'm adjusting into stay-at-home life as our great state of Virginia is closed for the better part of two and a half months. So slowly adjusting to the reality of we ain't going anywhere until June. Amazing times, yeah, for yeah. sure. How, for sure. How, how is it? Because you're in the you're in the UK now. So how is it in the UK? Yeah, similar. So like they say. I think they said six weeks. Oh. Um, originally, it was three weeks, and now they're saying six. And people seem to be playing that and doing their part. And I went to the the butcher today; was completely restocked. Like it seems like we got through that initial kind of panic. They're paper with that whole thing. So I, it's really interesting. I'm certainly getting a lot more work on oh, hes hesitating real quick i'm able to think about more things lately i don't know why yeah but I, so anyway so i i thought for today's discussion <clears throat> it would be interesting to dive a little further into this <clears throat> this dynamic that I, th I think is evolving for a lot of us of you know, clients that are in i guess critical financial care um you know, for some clients, hey, stuff's changed. We got to look at updating the plan. But for some clients, like, no, no, I don't have time to update the plan. Like, I heard there's a new government program that can give me a bunch of money for my business. I need to figure this out, like, right now. Can you help me today? Uh, and I might even be feeling that, fall, that call from multiple different clients at the same time who all heard about a new thing or a new piece of news or a new something financial that's going on and immediately want help and access to me as a financial advisor right away. And I got to respond to them or even triage. Who am I calling back? They're asking about programs that just came out. I don't necessarily know any more than they do because I got to figure this out. I don't even know where to find the time to figure this out because I'm dealing with all these inbound phone calls. Uh, like, ah, uh, right. Like just yeah. this, this, I feel like there's sort of this second flurry of activity that's cropping up. First was just, the flat out market volatility when it got underway in March. Now here in April, there's kind of this second wave of now the government response is coming. All these new programs are rolling out and we have this new wave of figuring out how to help clients in go like critical financial situations. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, super interesting. And, and I think, I mean, to me like this, this ends up starting to highlight a couple of just very real world challenges, right? One is uh, just how do I get up to speed on this stuff quickly? Or even just tell the clients, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how that program works because they just came out about it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go research it and try to get back to you. Uh, and do I even have the time to do that research right now with everything else that's going on? Other clients want me to research and ask about other things. Uh, uh, it feels weird to tell my clients, at least for some of us, like, I don't know. I'm going to have to try to look that up myself. Aren't you supposed to be the expert? Why do I pay you? Like, now's the crisis time. I've got questions. You don't have answers. What gives? Uh, just there's a lot that gets wrapped up into this fast moving environment where people want fast answers that are absolutely critical on new programs very quickly. And we're trying to figure out what to do, not from the literal, like, how do I find the information on Paycheck Protection Program? But just how do I deal with this onslaught of clients yeah. and questions and wanting expertise that suddenly I'm finding I don't have? Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting. Um, I, 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 like, I think, to me, the first thing that's really important is to get sort of ourselves right. Um, and, and I think of that as like, the mindset around how to approach this um, because it's really, it's super, even in the way this, ah, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do feeling. We've all, that feeling is completely normal, but in a time where people are looking for leadership, they need somebody who is confident 
And when we think about these changing environments, sometimes we've linked our confidence to our to to outcomes mm -hmm. and maybe even more specifically our confidence to like knowing the terrain or maybe even better like knowing the map of the terrain and i think we need to de-link our confidence from knowing the map of the terrain and we need to link it to our ability to engage in a process right so so that you can walk into that meeting even even when you're real you're you should be pretty sure that you don't know the answer because four days ago you had no clue what this like to use you know the payment protection plan as an example like you how could you clients aren't paying you for that to know that answer and again these are maybe upstream problems in terms of the way we communicated in the past that you and I've been talking about for a year now, but, right. but, but let's just say right now, clients aren't paying you to know the answer or defend the map. They're paying you to be the guide. And if you can be confident in your ability to engage in that process, which you should be like everyone listening to this should be, it's just that we're not used to that feeling like our confidence because this is like, we, we've never had to feel this way, but you should be, you are trained to do this. You know what you're doing. The process is pretty simple. We assess the current situation. I'd like to get to triage in a minute, but we assess the current situation for a client. We make the best guess at what to do next realizing it's going to be a, a thoughtful researched opinion <laughs> but it's the best guess about what to do next we take that action so we assess the situation we take an action we reset right like it it's pretty and 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 in some cases these are micro actions like i've got your phone call give me an hour right so the difference between i don't know i'll try to find it and get back to you and Michael, thank you for your call. I understand how important that is. Give me some time. Like this is moving so fast that I, nobody knows, but guess what, brother? I can figure it out. Yeah. Like that's the sense we need right now. And what? you can engage that way. And I think, I think getting that straight first is important is that your value doesn't come from what you maybe thought it did, designing a plan, knowing all the rules i've read the code back and forward like that's important but what's equally if not well actually what's more important right now is your ability to engage in a process of making decisions and resetting guiding people and in some cases as we've talked about before that guide is three six you know 12 months in some cases it's three hours yep. right that cycle rate of having new information yep. show up so that's where I would start is like getting yourself right, understanding that you're caught you because there's a tendency I've had like you have with I don't know hundreds, I don't know what the right word is. Yes, I've talked to hundreds of advisors over the last couple of days, feeling unmoored and totally lacking confidence. And if you shift your mindset from the map has changed, I don't know what I'm doing to hey, I know how to guide people in changing landscapes. Yeah you can feel really confident and engaging in that and realize it's massively valuable right now. And the sun is coming from out of the clouds. It's just perfect timing. <laughs> and it's, it's as though the angels are singing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I, I, I think so to helpful. me, the, just so one of that, the key, I, mean, like, I, that, I just think one of the key takeaways to that out of the, out of the gate is just this, this, Acknowledgement, once again, I mean, we've, we've said it before here on this podcast uh, as well, but like it, it's okay to tell the client, like, I don't know, but I will get you that answer. Or I, I thought you put it even better. Like, look, things are moving really fast right now. Just literally new information is coming out as we're talking. So I don't have all the answers for you right now, but I'm going to go get them for you as quickly as I can. And then we together will figure out what to do with it. Totally. And I think you like, we need to lean into that. Like we there's like, you can say, and you should feel, I don't know if you want to say it, but you should feel, and there's no one better to be holding like walking next to you right now than me. 
right? Like, A, I'm a rock star at this. Like, I wouldn't be saying that, these exact words, but this is how you should feel. A, I'm a rock star at this. I know how to figure this stuff out. B, I know you really well. So, yeah, you usually don't look, I'll yeah. figure it out. I'll get back. We're, we're, I've got you. I've got you, right? I've got your back. And And I think the second piece that, <clears throat> to me at least, that goes with this is, look, when... When there's this much stuff coming out and there's this much moving on, uh, uh, moving, as you said, the, the cycle rate is very fast of the amount of information that's coming out and hitting us. I think the second thing to acknowledge, like, <clears throat> it's okay to say, I'm going to find you an expert who specializes in this and I'm going to connect you with them. Like, I think there's also still this feeling right now, like, if I don't have the answer to every single question my client asks, I need to go find the answer to every single question that my client asks. And when the cycle rate is this fast and there's this much stuff coming out, like, yes, in a few weeks, you may get up to speed on all of it as you absorb all of it in, but you may not be able to absorb enough information fast enough. And so in, I think in that truest sense of being a guide, you know, it may be like, look, I'm still getting up to speed myself on paycheck protection program but here's a guide i found that the small business administration put out that i can give to you right now so you can start diving into this on behalf of your own business like i'm going to empower you mr client to you know take some of this on yourself because you're a business owner and you probably want to deal with this anyways but i will try to conduit information for you i will be your guide in helping you find the information i may not even have the answers you may be able to get up to speed on this faster than i can in your business by just connecting you to the resources or expertise. And so if I can't be the answer person, I can be the connector person. Like here's a key list of resources that I'm gonna put in front of you as quickly as possible. Yeah, and I, I think two things came to mind, which is really smart. Imagine how powerful it would be to say, cause I'm, I'm dealing with this right now. Imagine how powerful it would be for an, an, a, a, your financial planner to say, hey, Michael, I've, I've got you, like, I'm, I'm here, things are moving so fast. You know, it would be amazing. Let's get your accountant involved, like, immediately. Like, one more set of eyes. Would you mind if I called, right? Can I call her and we'll talk through what's going on? Because I would imagine she's getting similar questions. I'll get some information to you. She'll be looking, I'll be looking, like, like we're all hands on deck. Like, that's so, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I got a little nutty because I get, like, my hair stands up on the end. Like, I get so excited about the idea that you can help somebody right now. So that, and, and then I just had this experience, like, to give you a really, like, I just had this experience with a family member who owned a, a yeah, let's, let me not get specific. He, my, a family member owned a, an investment that I didn't know anything about. Like I knew what it was called. I, I've seen a million of them, but I like each one needs to be dug in really deeply. Like it could be an annuity. It could be a privately yeah. traded read. It could be you know, any of those sorts of things. And I said, I don't know, but let me find out. It took me about 10 minutes to find like 20 people who knew how to do this. Tyler Olson, um, who's a financial planner who knows these things really well, dug into it for me, got back in an hour with a really clear summary of what was going on. And the person who asked me, a close family member, was like, I, so blown away that we were able to get results. So it wasn't, or get answers. It wasn't, there was no like, what you don't know. It was the opposite. Yeah. So I think that's really, but, really important. But it's interesting, like, you didn't find an answer. You found a person who knew the answer which totally. sometimes you can actually do faster than get the answer, read up on it, learn it yourself and, and spit it out to the client. Yeah. And, and where do you do that? Right. So chances are everybody listening to this belongs to some community, you know, whether that's XYPN or it's something on Twitter or it's the fellowship or it's the, you know, like the group, Facebook of group LinkedIn group, your broker dealer, work. your custodial platform. Totally. That you can throw something up and go, does anybody know about this? Yep right? And in 10 minutes, you'll have somebody who says, raise their hands. And yeah, you, you, right. Like suddenly you're, I, I remember I used to feel that way when I worked at a big, big giant brokerage firm that will go unnamed, but has a bull as its symbol is owned by a bank. And I used to remember feeling like I could say to clients, like, I'm going to bring the full resources of this firm 
to every one of your situations. And now we've all created that, yeah. right? With these, like, I'm going to bring the full resources of everybody I know. Like, it's all hands on deck. Let's get your CPA involved. Let's get your attorney involved. Let's, let me check with everybody I know. Like, we'll get you answers. That's the kind of stuff I think should be going on. Yeah, the, the other piece to me that goes with this is sort of this, this recognition, like the, the challenge when the cycle rate picks up and there's all this demand for expertise is just that um, you're, you're trying to get information, like you're trying to learn the information, get it out as quickly as you can and recognize that any opportunity you have to make that repeatable, to make that scalable in your business is incredibly valuable right now. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you've got to look up something about Paycheck Protection Program, fine. Every time you find a resource, like a good guide, a good article, a good thing from the government, whatever, like save that PDF document or save the link to that article. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you get 20 minutes, turn on a web page for your website that says, you know, resources for small business clients dump the links there, send a quick email to all your small business owners and clients that just says, hey, I'm gathering some of this information together so that you all can look in one central place. And so you don't have to get stuck in this trap of every single client, every single question, they're all different or all trying to rapidly iterate, like scale your expertise as you're finding it. If you are doing some of this research or trying to find resources and answers and start pulling together a central summary of here's all the stuff that I found that would probably be useful to you, Mr. or Mrs. Client, or send out to all your small business owner clients or all your clients. Like whatever the thing is, take a moment of expertise that you find, make it repeatable and scalable by finding other ways to leverage it and get it out there. Yeah, I think it, I think it's maybe really important to 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 highlight that a bit. Like what's happening is most most planners are, well, <laughs> all the planners listening to this are humans. Yep. And when humans are faced with this level of uncertainty, we really want to, I mean, most of the time we want to, we want a f flight, we want to get in a fight or a flight. And, and, and sometimes that means we want to hide. And because we don't know what to do, we're going to hide a little bit and we're going to hide behind research and we're going to hide behind them and, and uh, I think right now you could just do the world a massive service, let alone your own business by just being on the front foot and saying like, I'm on it, right? Like, and, and if I, if it were, if I were building a business right now, I would be, I don't know if daily is too often, but certainly every, at the end of every week and maybe twice a week, maybe Wednesdays and Fridays, I would be sending out an email saying, here's, you know, look, you may not have this situation right now, but here's what I've been researching. I found this, this, and this. You know, here's some of the big questions. Know that we're on it. And I would end that email by saying, look, if, if you've got, like, we're super busy right now, but if you've got friends or family who are nervous about this, feel free to share it with them, right? And suddenly you're on the front foot being a resource out in public when most people are hiding right now. Right. And, and they're not hiding. I'm using, I mean, some people are literally hiding and they, those people, we need to give them a swift kick. Other people are just hiding because they're scared and nervous and that's normal. So yeah, I love the idea of getting out on the front foot, like a morning briefing. Like I've seen some planners doing it's amazing, like morning coffee, Zoom meetings. Like I'm going to, uh, it's 15 minutes. I'm going to give you an update on everything I've found. If you're a small business owner, this obviously gets easier if people have been focused on Right. on a, a specialization or a, 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 a niche, as we say here in the UK, yep. okay? Um, but, right, like morning briefing, like I'm thinking of ad optometrists, you know? Morning briefing for optometrists, everything we need to find, it's 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, and, Join and, if you want to, feel free to forward this to your friends, right? Yeah, you feel free to forward your fellow optometrists as I'm the leading expert on optometrists and their financial planning issues that there is to me an interesting sort of indirect angle that, that, that comes from this. When you get in these environments where, you know, there's a lot of critical financial clear and a fast cycle rate on the information that's flowing that to me that 
this becomes one of the areas where, frankly, ha having some kind of niche, some kind of focused clientele helps. Because the challenge that so many of us have, like when, when you've got 100 clients of 100 different types, the 100 different problems, they ask 100 different questions and you don't have the time to research 100 different answers right now. So you're feeling that pressure. If you're specialized in a particular domain, you know, if, you, if you specialize with optometrists running small practices, like you can go find all the information exactly relevant for optometrists, small business owners, how it works, produce one resource that's helpful for all of them and you've answered all 100 questions at once with one answer instead of 100 questions with 100 answers. I mean, like that, that's the essence of what I like to call repeatable expertise. You know, your planning yeah. gets much more efficient and it gets noticeable in times like this when you can repeat your expertise because every client's got the same question because you picked a particular consistent type of clients who ask the same types of questions and you're awesome at knowing the answers to that. Now, it, for advisors who aren't already focused that way, like I, obviously we can't wave, wave our magic wands and change that now, but you can start watching for what are any opportunities where I can turn this into repeatable expertise, right? That, that resource I found, okay, I'm going to start making a, pay, a, a list of resources and I'm going to start emailing out the resources. And then once a week, I'll email out updates of new resources that I found. And then I'll do my, uh, you know, coffee with me, uh, once a week or twice a week, say, here are new resources I found on this thing and start turning one-to-one -one things you're looking up and trying to find out for answers for clients into at least one-to-few. You can, maybe can't do them one-to-many if your clients are very diverse in, in their needs, but can you at least start turning it into one-to-few <clears throat> and trying to make this fast cycling process more efficient for yourself? So it's so powerful. I don't even know how to talk. I don't, I don't know how to talk to anybody about marketing more if they don't have a, a, a niche. I, I don't even know how to, you know, so, so yeah, I think this, that's really good advice on how to start moving that direction. Yeah. So super good. So the last question I want to ask you, Carl, is to kind of come back to the challenge we had at the beginning. Like, how do you think about these triage? situation so you triage the medical world like a bunch of patients come in with various health issues and maladies you know triaging is the process of figuring out which is most important that i need to answer first that i need to address first so in the medical system it's like you know you if i don't help you in the next five minutes are going to die you if i don't help yeah. you in the next five minutes are going to continue to be in pain but you're going to survive so no offense like i'm going to leave you in pain for a while because I need to help this person who is going to die if I don't intervene immediately. So, you know, we don't necessarily deal with the same level of literal life and death stakes in the financial world as the medical world, but we do, I think, hit these situations when, you know, the volatility amplifies, and particularly now that it's propagating into business owners, people's jobs, people's employment situations. Like, we're going beyond just a portfolio thing now. This is a whole financial life thing. And people start asking questions. And of course, everything is important to them, right? I hurt, I want access to you. But you're looking at this and saying like, you hurt, but that guy hurts more right now. And that guy's going to die soon. So I got to go help him first. How, like, how do you handle that? What do you say to clients when they're calling, emailing, trying to reach you? And obviously, you don't really want to say like, well, I'm going to help another client instead because I think his situation is more important. Uh, or maybe you do say that. Like, how do you, yeah. how do you handle this without just pissing yeah. clients off? Well, so first, let's just let's just make an assumption real quickly that it's a problem. Like, so first of all, you know, if, if you've got if you've seventeen clients and they're all optometrists, this isn't a problem. So don't make it into one if it's not. And if you have a hundred clients, it may not be a problem either. Like, who knows, right? But if it's a problem, I think I like to think of risk as consequence of failure and so when i think of a client i think of clients risks when i think of a client's goals i like to rank them in order of riskiness i don't necessarily communicate this with clients but riskiness and riskiness is consequence of failure and so that's the same way i would do this is i would triage it's a lot like what you outlined with uh, with medical doctors right is i would just think like who has the highest consequence of failure 
and then I would be focused on solving those problems. But in terms of how you communicate it, I, I do think like you get an email, I think a couple of things. Number one, response is super important. And even if the response is, I want you to know I've got this, I'm doing a little bit of research. As I understand it, I'm going to get back to you in three or four days. You know, so response, setting expectations and follow through. Like it's crazy how, how me like flows for referability if you'll just do what you said you would do, right? Response. And, and I, I remember um, I had a kind of advisor friend who, you know, like everybody would send out these fancy birthday gifts and holiday gifts and whatever. And my advisor friend was like, yeah, but those people don't even return emails. He was pointing to some specific people. I'm not saying in general. He was saying, look, what I'm focused on is rapid response to clients' concerns. I don't worry about all that other stuff. So response, setting clear expectations, and then following through. And so that could look like I, you know, I get an email. I know the situation well enough to know that this isn't like, you know, like if I get back to them next week, that's going to be fine. So I reply to that email and I say, I want you to know I've received this. Um, I'm working on. I'm, I'm working on this right now, mm -hmm. right? And as I understand your situation, getting back to you next week would be fine. Let me know if that's, let me know if I've missed something. Okay. So hit send. So you're sort of right? a, a, asking for permission slash kind of telling and setting expectations. Like I'm going to get back to you next week. So just, you bought yourself time. If you understand their situation well, they should be okay with that you've invited them to object if they're not right if there's something else in the situation that you didn't know that you didn't realize that makes this more time pressing you have opened the door for them to come back to you and say no 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 i really need an answer now and here's why yep and 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 if you've got any of those resources you pointed to earlier right like maybe this is just i'm really scared about the market yeah you know like hey here's a couple of resources we've put together for people on these things like maybe this is just my maybe maybe you didn't know but my daughter's business is going to fail tomorrow and I just need to ask you a quick question. And yeah. you've left the door open to like, oh, no, 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 no. It's about my daughter's business. Can you please jump on the phone? So I, I just think that's the only way I can think through to do it. Get a response out. Even if the response is, I've got this, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Yeah. But you, and you wouldn't necessarily say like, a, you know, uh, you know. Like explain I, the trio situation. Yeah, explain the trio, right? Like, I think for some of us, we feel this motivation, but like, the, well, the client's going to say like, well, why can't you reply to me today? Like, why did you say next week? Why can't it be right now or by the end of the day? I feel like you're usually so responsive. So I'm like, I want to preemptively answer that and say like, well, you know, some of our other clients are in even more dire financial situations than you. So I'll get back to you next week. Or like, you just, you wouldn't even open that door, just set the expectation recognize most people will just accept the reality they're presented if you say you're getting back to them next week because there's fast moving information and you're researching they will accept that don't overthink it and if it's really that urgent for them they will tell you if you if you give them the opportunity to yeah i'm just thinking through risk reward in that conversation like and i i consider myself a relatively decent communicator in situations like this and i can't think of a time like i hate those calls when i call and say due to high call volume like i called delta last week due to high call volume your hold time is nine hours <laughs> that didn't make me feel better so so i think you know here's another way to say that same email would be hey i've got this email i i i Things are moving really quick right now. Let me research your question. And I'll get back to you. Would it be all right? Right? Like you could soften that up a little bit and say, look, would it be all right if I get back to you in three or four days? Would it be all right if I get back yeah. to you next week? You know, if there's something I'm misunderstanding about this, just hit reply quickly, right? Or here's my number, call me, you know, like something like that. That would feel better to me than, sorry, your situation's not bad enough. You know what I mean? I, I can't even think of a good way to say that. So I think yeah. you're just doing that without saying it. Yeah. Would be, but again, I think, I think clients understand, I like, we're busy. They all sort of know we're not their only client. Just set a reasonable expectation. Not reasonable because, like, I feel like I got replied every client in 24 hours. Reasonable to how fast do they actually need an answer for their actual problem? 
right? This is a, we can't over service and be super fast right now. Just answer in a timeline that's reasonable to the problem. Set that expectation with the client. Let them know if it is more urgent, they can always come back to you and they'll do that if it's that urgent or you can decide whether they you think they were right to escalate it. Most people will accept you at your word. And then you've bought yourself the time that you need just to deal with all the other things that are coming at you. Yeah, let me just insert just one last thing in that is maybe ask another question too. Like often we misinterpret the question. So it's it's like, mm -hmm. it could just be, hey, I need to talk to you. Like that's often the email. Like they're not gonna take right. the time. Like, hey, I need to talk to you. I wonder if we can come in for a meeting. One of my favorite questions always was, got it. And I use this question today now a lot. Um, got thanks so much for the email. You know, I hope you're well, da, 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 all that stuff. And then I would say, hey, just so I can be prepared. Can you give me just a little detail on what's, uh, just so I can make the most of your time, client. Can you give me a little detail on um, on what's going on or what's up or why you want to meet? Or I don't like why you want to meet because that feels like, why do you want to meet? I think I just say, look, just so I can make the most, the best use of your time and be yeah. prepared. Um, give me a little sense of what's on your mind. And, and I would imagine that, uh, well, at worst, just you'll know exactly what the scope of the conversation is and then can figure out how urgent it needs to be. At best, they really just needed to vent and they'll vent to the email. By the time they're done, they'll write at the end, like, actually, this really got out everything I needed to say. I don't think we need to meet anymore. It's surprising how often that happens. Well, awesome. Uh, appreciate the suggestions and kind of talking through triaging clients and and dealing with fast cycle rates of new information uh hope you're enjoying your time hunkering down there in the uk carl mm, thank you michael stay well thank you you too